Hello guys and welcome back. Short video, like I mentioned, this is how things are going to be for a little while because I have no broadband. Uh, so I can manage 15, 20 minute videos, anything more than that, it just takes forever on 4G where I live. Um, so I've got a video to do on the golf, which I may release tonight over the weekend and I'm just getting this video into me, me list basically to get it edited. Because I've got an opportunity here, uh, I'll get to it in a minute of what I'm going to say, but uh, you're going to have to excuse A, it being indoors, B, super bright lightning here, I hope it doesn't affect the camera, but we're currently going through, what is it, Storm Babette, uh, playing hell out there, so I cannot record outside, that's why I've got the doors shut and I've had to get the lights on, because it's almost like dark through the day. So what is it? What it's going to be is a bit of an update on the super... Cheapest Chips Budget Car Challenge with Corsa. I've had it out for a drive over the weekend. We'll go through a few things with that. And weirdly, I've got exactly... Yeah, I've painted it. Whatever you class it as. Blue. Nah, it's a different car. But, um, yeah, weirdly, we've got two Corsa Ecoflexes in. One's a Corsa E. One's a Corsa D. But I like to just call those a facelift of the D. But whatever. It's... You normally can tell on the chassis numbers. Let's have a look on this one. See, they're still listed as a, as a D, you know, WLD, but a lot of people class them as a Corsa E. A bit like the Vauxhall range, how a Corsa A kind of never existed. It was always the Corsa B. You see SLD, same on that one. But anyways, people do call those Corsa E, and people call these Corsa D, but you can tell they're pretty much... Uh, they're just a facelift, and it's as simple as that. But I'm going to go through a few of the ups and downs, uh, positives, negatives, which one I would prefer, which one would you prefer, as well as a few updates. So, on my car, I had it out on the weekend. I haven't put this on video yet, only on my YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube channel, Facebook page. Uh, so, if you want to head across there, Car to Garage Northeast on Facebook, there's a lot of interaction on there, where you can have more one-to-one -one banter back and forwards. Uh, than what I can manage on YouTube. But, like I've mentioned, this 1300 diesel, I've never had much interest in them since they come out in, like, I think it was about 2004, four, five when they started in the course I sees. Um, never liked them, never had much to do with them, can't really be bothered with them. Don't particularly like little engines anyway, let alone little diesels. But I'll take it back on this car at least, because I'm going to get to this type. Um, I'll take it back for this one. It drives fantastic. It has had a new turbo on. It has only got 80,000 mile. I don't believe it's had a remap, but if it has, I could quite believe it. But I'm telling you what, it pulls super well. And I'm going from this PD Golf I'm driving at the minute. Really, it does, but it's probably for the fact it's got none of the eco crap on it. It hasn't got stop start. It hasn't got a DPF, yet it still qualifies for the EcoFlex 35 pound road tax. But yeah, I took it down some country roads to give it an, an Italian tune up. Um, and I'll tell you what, mind, even with the windows open, that turbo doesn't, I'll, I'll show you, half makes some lovely sounds, it's proper whooshing sort of sounds, you can really hear it working, but like I've mentioned, there's a receipt for, doesn't look it, it just looks rusty, but it is actually a new turbo on there, so, so yeah, obviously, driving wise, fantastic, can't fault it, really does drive nice, but based on a punt road driving experience, is a bit meh, it's the electronic power steering, it ha the, 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 they never have, even these ones had what I would class as much of a positive experience, but at the end of the day, they are what they are, but the engine is fantastic, I mean like I said, it handles and drives okay, I've drove these from when they were brand new, it, it drives as good as this one with something like 40, I think, 30, 40,000 mile this one, uh, so yeah, this is the bit of comparison I'm going to do. I've been doing a bit of work on it, which I wanted to show you halfway through the job. As you know, when the bonnet's shut, these on the bumpers flap around and it looks awful because it sticks out. So a bit more bodgery. I've just banged in two screws and now it's nice and solid, same as that one will be when I do it. Going to look into getting a cap for that. Nothing really to report under the bonnet. It's been spot on. Around to the back... Uh, this back bumper, as all Corsa Ds normally have them coming loose, um, the clips inside of there are broken. I've just banged in a few Phillips screws just to keep it. It's not exact, but it's better than it was. And uh, that's what it was. I had two spare LED number plate lights, and this one was working. And then now again, when you've got to give it a tap to get it to work, we'll test that now, actually, before I clip them into place to see if it's working. Let's have a look. Because... 
It's not an MOT requirement. You only need one to work. Um, so there we go. So, sorry, I'm saying LED. I had some... It had LED ones in, and they were starting to, to... One of them was going off and flickering and stuff. So I've just replaced them with me standard bulbs I had sitting around. So, yeah. So, as you can see, they're nicely working. Don't really feel the need to have LEDs on a basic diesel Corsair. I just like it to be standard. And, again, it's the one thing coppers will stop you for. As long as you've got your both lights working. Two in this case. Some cars just have one. And both number plate lights. And, obviously, regularly check your stop lights as well. It's just things when you've got a copper f following you with nothing else better to do uh, to stop you. You've got a number plate light out, sir. You've got a stop light out, sir. You've got a tail light out, sir. Which is why I tell everybody, just check your lights regular because it just saves you hassle when you can't be bothered to be getting stopped. Because as much as you don't want to have to stop, you have to by law, clearly. And you've just got to stand and faff around with the police, letting them search your car, all this stuff. It just saves you hassle. Just to make sure, you're, especially your backlights, are all up to spec and it'll save you a bit of hassle, basically. So, yeah, that's what I've been going around doing, sort of the number plates. And the other thing is the exhaust. The bracket is just catching the, 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 the bar. The subframe, there's like a little bar that went across and I put my hands up and I admit I fitted the, did the exhaust, did all that and I forgot about the bar. Then when I put the bar on I noticed the little bracket at the bottom of the exhaust so I'm just going to loosen it off, move it and re-tighten it back up and that'll be it. But it's really annoying when you're driving the car. It's like unbelievable how just a rattle can totally sometimes spoil a car. And on this case I need to get that done because uh, it sounds dreadful. Uh, so yeah, get that sorted. And that's all I want to do, just tie, tie up a few loose ends, sort them bulbs, sort out the, uh, the, the, these really annoying things on the front bumper, which kept sticking out. And that was it, really, because I'm going to be using it this weekend. Just a few bits that were bugging us. Uh, but yeah, I'll take back every word I said about the Z13. I'll speak more about the A13 in a second. Um, yeah, that, not a bad little engine. Pain in the backside to get the CGR valve, but the way they've, this is what I'm going to show you with this car in the minute, the, which they really spoilt the engine in that car. But you had to for the emissions reasons. So, anyways, what's the difference? Corsa E, Corsa D. Now, first off, Corsa D headlamps. They look pretty much the same, but they're not, which I'll demonstrate in a second. So, you've got your dip beam, main beam, nice, lovely big indicator. Now, on the Corsa E, they started with the obsession which every car now has to have the running lights i do agree with them but this way they've done a bodge up because same thing main beam dip beam now they've used the indicator area as the running light and they've just rammed in this indicator down here and i'll do a demonstration now i'll put the lights on on both cars and these have a very very unclear which i find is the biggest fault with modern cars is unclear indicators so we'll put the indicator on and we'll stick the headlamps on and we'll do the same on the right hand side of, of, of this Corsa for demonstration purposes because it just means I can get them both in camera switch it on right hand indicator is it going yes right so as you can see with the older Corsa nice and big massive indicator up here even with the dip beam on that's nice and visible I think you'll all agree yeah now you've got the Corsa E, running light, bright headlamp in a tiny little slit at the bottom, flashing away. And you compare that to that. So to me, that's a downgrade. But yes, of course, which I'll show you in a second, we've gained what everybody... It's all just for what people want, consumers, what they want. They had to have their running lights because they weren't compulsory at that age, at um, 2011. There is actually only, what, two years difference between these two cars. Um... So I'll just turn these off because I don't want to run batteries down with lights going. I just wanted to demonstrate that. I'll turn that indicator off. Right. And as you can see, oh, they've probably gone off because I've switched the ignition off, I think. Or they don't come on unless they're running. I don't know. But anyways, these have got running lights on. I'm not quite sure how. Yeah, I think the engine's got to be running. But I'm not going to start it up in here for the fumes. But anyway... These are running lights as well as the side lights. So they've used the area for the indicator to, for the running lights. And then as an afterthought, just bang the indicator down here. Um, my partner used to have a car like this when I first met her. And I used to hate that so many people would miss you indicating, especially when you've got your lights on. So to me, you've gained daylight running, daytime running lights 
but you've lost the safety of having a clear indicator. Seems to be the way with all companies now. So yeah, a bit of a thumbs down on the Corsa E versus the Corsa D on the front end. And I personally, not much difference. Just a bit more fiddly and faffy a bit under there than that. I personally like this one with the nice big V versus like the circular. And again, like down here with the kind of blocks versus slats. I quite prefer this. It looks a little bit Astra-like. Um, that's just my preference. I prefer this look to that look. But again, it's everybody their own preference. This is a bit of a low aspect car with no fogs. This is one of the top aspect ones in SE. This is an active SE. So we're going. We're not going to. You know, we're not going to go off com competing on specs here. But they are both the kind of same model of car, um, which Vauxhall introduced about 2008 after Holly's Astra, the Eco Flex. The blues, the greeny stuff sort of wearing off on that one. Ecoflex. And this one's exactly the same. Ecoflex, which they've changed the symbol around. What it basically means is you get the cheap tax. In this case, it's 35. This one, do a reg check. It'll either be 35 the same, 20 or free. Um, I think it's like £20. Did they not used to leave a tax disc on this car? No, it's just the National, the National Trust. But... Either way, there's only 35 to 20 to zero. It'll be one of those. That's all it was basically doing. From the back end, I don't really think there's any difference. I think the back lights look the same. As far as I can tell. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they haven't changed anything around the back end. Obviously, this has got parking sensors, but it's a higher spec car. Yeah, so around the back end, nothing. I'm just trying to even see some changes. Yeah, the Vauxhall badge, that's it. So obviously, again, I prefer the regular standard Vauxhall badge. And at this point, Vauxhall decided to change to the new emblem because manufacturers just can't leave nothing alone. I personally think you should just leave your badge as it is so people get to know how it looks. Um, just to change the, the new Peugeot badge. Has anybody checked that one out? If you look back to the last protons that were made, the new Peugeot badge, I swear to God, looks almost identical, not even from a distance, to a Proton. I actually seen a new, about a year ago, when the new badge came out, and I swear to God, I thought Proton was back. I like Proton, by the way, guys, so I'm not going to slag them off. I think they were absolutely great. Um, but yeah, anyways, I just think, little tweaks, yes, but keep changing around the manufacturer's badges. I don't get what that's all about. A little bit, maybe. But some of them are changing the badges every day. But anyways, that's off subject. So yeah, any, any more as we see? Not really. Definitely not along the sides, as far as I'm aware. No? Can you guys see any bar spec differences? Nah. Pretty much the same. Just a bit on the front. A very mild facelift. But on the inside, they get a, a bit more different. Um, it's mainly under the bonnet where they get quite a lot different. So inside, we'll just briefly go through... They change a lot of the switch gear a little bit. You get these, like, again, I don't like them. They're, like, sort of spring-loaded switches. See better when it's lit up like all this. Where the auto lights, you can't just leave it in off because when you let go, it swings back. Again, taking control from the driver. Does my head in. Those older ones do have automatic lights, but it's a physical switch where you can go off and it stays on off. Auto, sides, main. Like, like, it, like it lets you select those manual on the auto section to off every time you start the car up a default goes to auto lights i don't like that you're the driver you're in control and i hate it when cars take control from the driver spec wise this is an se few little neat things on this one mainly it's got heated seats and a heated steering wheel if you note the heated steering wheel you know for a course i have that it was one of the first cars i come across with that but then we start going downhill from there this button here eco Yep, you know what that means? Stop, start, nonsense. Awful. Very expensive AM... Uh, what does he call it again? AFB batteries. Ele was it electric light footed batteries? And AGM batteries. Very, very expensive. Over £200. Uh, again, the general stop, start. Knocks your starter motor up. Doesn't do the engine any good. I hate it from day one, and I still hate it now. But unfortunately, these were coming into it. But again, this car will either be 35 20 or free road tax... Where that's got none of that and it still complies for the £35 road tax. Down here, pretty much the same, no changes. Um, mainly, it was all like, again, with these, it's just extras for these. And they put these like sort of new kind of um, dashboard types. Bit of a bigger display in the centre. 
but I think that might have been available on the preface lift on higher spec. And again, cruise control, uh, which I wish that one did have. Mm. And automatic wipers in the N4 section, which you twist, which goes through there. I'm not going to touch it, I'm just going to leave it. Auto dip dim mirror, rain sensing lights and wipers. But again, this is a higher spec car. So, But anyways, that was pretty much on these glow-in-the-dark sort of switches like that. I don't think them other ones do that. Very mild. Oh, yeah, and that was it, this shift thing. See, under the rev count, obviously, the stop start, it's got where it says auto stop start and that green shift. And every time you're in the wrong gear, it lights up on the dashboard telling you to shift. I don't like that. Been driving long enough, I'll decide when I want to shift. I don't need a stupid, annoying green light to tell me this. Um, but again, that was part of the Eco Flex range. But again, this same Eco Flex range, and it doesn't have none of that nonsense. So we'll go inside of this one. As you'll see, older car, but pretty much the same things. But we don't have what I like is the switch. This hasn't got auto lights, but if it did, it would be off auto side. And it's just normal. But if it did have auto, it's one click back and it stops in that position. So you've got full control. The lights, again, this the glow in the dark things, it hasn't got them. When you get inside, it's pretty much the same deal, really. Turn the ignition on, dash lights up, little of display, but none of that stupid green thing telling you when to change. And we don't have the obviously I haven't got the heated seats, but they would have been available. But the stop-start nonsense. We don't want that. We don't need that. Apart from that, same thing. It's even got the auxiliary thing down there. More cup holders. Better space, in my opinion. But no cruise control or the computer thing. But again, it's the spec of the car. Same with the dip-dim mirror and all that. But yeah, that was just briefly inside. But yeah, the differences come here. And this is one reason. All the other reasons, like the lights and stuff on one of these, I'm not bothered. But the main reason and it's not Vauxhall's fault it's just the way the government went about emissions this is probably like euro four because it hasn't even got a deep ref uh, to cut this will be euro five so again it makes no difference this car's not eligible for the clean air zones neither is that anyway because it's euro five it's got to be euro six so all this nonsense on this one is to no avail i'm just going to open the bonnet so here are the big differences so this is your z 70 17 it's the same on all the Vauxhalls range. Zs are your Euro 4s slash 5. And mainly the A's are your Euro 5. So this is your Z13. This is a DTJ. They did DTH, which is a higher power one and all sorts of different ones. But this has got the turbo situated low down, which is where you want it really because the higher up on the engine you get, <laughs> it's the first things that will become an issue if you have an oil pressure issue. So the turbos lower down, it's a better thing. Plus, it's just in means there your glow plugs there. I'm not going to pull the engine cover off. Nice and easy to get to. Please note for the next car. And again, like I say, a nice old fashioned catalytic converter, diesel catalytic converter. Relatively still a bit of a pain. Oil filter to get to. You don't need to take any pipe work off. And yeah, so that's your Z13. Still gets the same tax as that one. This will get much better miles per gallon. No messing on with regens. A battery will be nice and cheap because it hasn't got stop start. You don't have to burn your flywheel gear and out, starter motors out. So, yeah. And all the, still the same benefits. Still not compliant for any of the clean air zones, but nor are they. So, that's your Z13. Now, this is your A13. Same engine in a certain degree, but changed a lot. So, now, they've lifted the turbo right up here mainly to fit the DPF in. But now the fact the turbo is higher up, it's at higher risk from oil starvation, it's exposed. But the best thing, well, Fiat, Vauxhall decided to do, we thought, okay, we'll stick a big DPF on there. Again, these little 1300s choke up at the best of times without the DPF. We don't need them on these. Um, they've whacked a massive great big DPF on. And then they thought, right, we'll lift the turbo up and we'll put the turbo in front of the glow plugs. And what do these pro engines have problems with? Glow plugs. There are your glow plugs down there. In fact, I'm even going to get a light to show you. Because when my partner had one of these cars, glow plug went off. I'd never dealt with one before and I thought, ah, that'll be a two-minute job. They've put the, t the glow plugs, black plug there, see that one? Right in between the turbo. That one in there. And that one there and as you see underneath yeah you can't get to them you can get to these two i think yeah turbo dpf moved 
ridiculous. Then you've got your knock sensors, you've got temperature sensors down there, all expensive. And then what's the other problem we get with the 1300 Fiat engines? Even them ones, timing chains. So what's the one thing you don't want to do to your oil to create problems? Because they only take three litres-ish of oil, three and a half, is failed regens, diesel dilutes into the oil, makes the oil thinner, which knocks your timing chain up because the oil's so thin. So yeah, even more timing chain issues, glow plug issues, here and there to get that on. And the oil filter, a little bit different down there, a, a plastic like sort of in an angle. So you've got to go taking all of the pipe work off. It's not a big deal, but you just shouldn't have to do it to change an oil filter. So yeah, these are where the big problems start. And again, we've got the stop start. So we've got a uh, you, is it written on there? Yeah, an AMG battery, very expensive. And you've got a special starter motor. And the struggle to heat up at the best of time, these things, so you don't want them stop starting. So, yeah, there we go. And to me, it's not Vauxhall's fault, it's the way the government were pushing. It, all engines kind of went this way. Yeah, that's the issue. The A13, thumbs down. Z13, thumbs up. And definitely on a personal level with that engine, it pulls so well. So, so well, and very, very quiet compared to the other one as well. We'll just do a bit of a comparison. I will just start one up, and you can have a listen for yourselves. I find these are very tinny and rattly. I mean, the diesels are never going to sound great. But we'll stir this one up. I'll not do them at the same time, obviously. So... Nice, you know? One of the quietest 30, I mean, I don't know how this comes across on camera. Definitely one of the quietest 13s I've ever heard these. So, yeah, there we go. Nice, like, obviously it was cold. It's levelled itself out there. And we'll do the same with the other one. Then we'll wrap things up because I need to do, get my dinner. So we've got these ones, which is, yeah, again, bearing in mind, this is really hot. The touch has just been in for MOT and service and all that. So this has just been serviced and it's warm. That one is stone cold. So again, something else I hate. Can't fire it, having to press clutches. Just, again, taking control away from the driver. And a special little light there with a foot on a pedal. Can you see it? So now we need to be told. Watch it go off. That isn't even going off. But I am pressing the clutch anyway, but... And again, now... Blaring light in here, still got the lights burning. When you're trying to start it up, loading the battery up, because you can't turn the automatic lights off. Again, taking control away from the driver. And there, actually, there are your running lights, which you've now sacrificed for an indicator. But yeah, if you listen to that, just nowhere near, I don't think, as nice as that. Give a little listen to it. And this has only got not many miles. It's not showing us like 40 or something on. So, yeah, that's that one. And while them bright running lights are on, I'll just demonstrate again to you the, the indicator situation. Is it on? There we go. I'm not saying that invisible, but just very unclear. Especially when you've got your actual headlamp on. So yeah, there we go. I just thought I'd do that bit of an update on the Corsa. Let's turn these lights off and everything. Uh, just a bit of an update on mine. And why not? I've got the same kind of car in to give you a bit of a heads up. Uh, you know, these are obviously worth a hell of a lot more money than these. So are you getting a better car for 2011, 2009? It's not a lot of time between them, but a whole lot of difference when it comes to ownership you know and subframes these are getting at the same level as these so just because they're a bit older car doesn't make a great deal of difference to be fair still seeing the, the newer ones with the same issues so yeah that was it i just wanted to do a quick video you know 20 minutes half an hour just to film myself a bit of a um a line to make up for not being able to do the weekly vlogs which when i get the virgin in with one gig it won't be one gig upload speed but anyways i'll be starting to do it then um when i get a bit more time and if things quieten down a bit it's just been that busy 
haven't even had time to me dinner this week because I've been getting a second toilet, I think I mentioned on me thing, fitted and everything. So there's been loads going on at home. I haven't uh, finished early last night to look after the little one because uh, Holly went out. So I'd say just little things, I just haven't had time. So hope you've enjoyed it. Again, thank you to all of you. So even just supporting the channel by hitting the like, subscribing, share it to your friends if, any, if you think anybody would like this. Um, you know, and if you are watching this, there's loads of other videos. I forgot I had so many. Uh, so if you do just happen to watch this one video and you haven't seen the others, have a look. Take a look at the others. And a special thanks for everybody who, who's there helping support with the Buy Me A Coffee, link below. The super thanks, all that stuff. It all massively helps keep the channel going. As you see, it's little ticks, tips and tricks, things I do like these cars to keep them going. Um, I am keeping an eye out for another budget car, but it's just finding the time to get them done. Um, so I will be with you soon with a bit more content. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll catch you on another video. Thanks for watching.